Good morning. Oh, come on, guys. Good morning. We're going to have some fun today. We're in beautiful Minnesota. It's fantastic to be here. Thank you for coming. Um, let me get a feeling for the audience first. Um, how many are corn and soybean? Raise your hand. Okay. How many grazers do we have in, in the audience, please? All right. How many uh, small grains? Ah, some more small grains. Okay, how many, um, how many district employees do we have? Okay, nobody wants to raise their hand. <laughs> how many NRCS employees? Raise your hand. Excellent, good, good. Um, let's see, any extension people? No extension people? Any other agency? What other agency? Pheasants Forever. Pheasants Forever, awesome. Yeah, our conservation groups. Thank you guys for coming. Any, um, how many of you are here for free lunch? Come on, I, I, you just came here and just wandered around again. Okay, there's a bunch of people there wandering around. Okay, let me, I'm just gonna start off real quick. Thank you um, as working as a team, Stephanie for helping us out and Tim back there and Mark, we couldn't do this with the, without you guys' help. And let me, tell you just a little bit about me because today is not about me. It's really about you learning today. And I've been real, I was telling people I've been real blessed. Uh, in the last 18 months, I've been in six continents. And I'm telling you the soil health movement is growing on a global scale. Uh, before I get into that, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I'm, um, I grew up in uh, northern New Mexico. Our family's been there for about four to 500 years, we've been there for a long time. Mark and I grew up in New Mexico, so you guys wondered. I started my career in NRCS as a technician, a technician designing irrigation systems in the West. Uh, went to college at New Mexico State, got my degrees, uh, went to um, um, ag biology, soils, agronomy, and all that, etc. But let me tell you, so I, as soon as I graduated, they put me into Missouri. Now, you take somebody from a really dry area and put them in the, the boot hill, Missouri, where they get 60 inches of rain, that was quite a shock. And then five years in Missouri, five years in Oregon. But here's where my soil health journey started, ladies and gentlemen. It really started in Idaho and when I was a district conservationist in, in, in um, Idaho and Oregon. It was about halfway through my career, I said, something's wrong with agriculture. I, I, I couldn't put my finger on it. And when you work in a government or you work with a, even your own farm, I mean, your own family, we all, what we call is social conditioning. When somebody thinks differently, we'll condition them so they can think like everybody in the group. And I would ask my peers, I said, why? We're spending all this money and every time irrigation season, that Snake River would turn chocolate right at my border. And I was the district conservationist responsible for that. Number two, how come if you farm 500 prime acres in the Treasure Valley, how many have ever been to the Treasure Valley in Idaho? Got five rivers, they got all the water and their soils are amazing. They grow hops, they grow, grow anything there. Why can you not farm 500 acres and support two families? Nobody can answer that for me. Oh, shut up, Ray. Do your work and push money out. That was my job. So I started asking that question. And if my neighbor, I had 11 acres, and my neighbor could not bring his son in the operation, he landed up working for NRCS as an agronomist, state agronomist. But he wanted to stay on the farm. My point of bringing this story is, I had no hope for agriculture 16, 17 years ago. <coughs> now I have hope. Because today what we're gonna teach about is what I was not taught in school. I did not have one professor tell me, or one mentor, or anybody that was gonna get me in agriculture, to say, Ray, your goal is to emulate nature. Our farming and our ranching is how do we mimic nature? 
I did not have one professor tell me that. See, my education was very fragmented. They taught me about tools, the sprays, the fertilizers, the chemicals, the tillage, but not one person put it together and said, Ray, no, 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 no. It's not about the conservation plan. It's not about the nutrient management plan. It's about the goal. The goal that we're going to talk about today is how can we emulate the natural system and mimic it? Follow its principles and its patterns. And what does that mean? How can we mimic the architecture of that little wooded area? Different heights, different root depth, how it captures sun, because the principles we talk about it is we capture it from the forest and the prairie. See, I used to think that the prairie and the forest worked very different from the farm. It does not. We don't talk about that today and how we can mimic nature, how we can get farmers to back off on the chemicals. And we're still doing this because when I got back from Brazil, you know what their size of their farms are? 100,000 acres. Got a call from a farm that's 2.3 million acres. They've been doing no-till and covers for years and still using copious amounts of chemicals. And they're still not backing off. So we're going to talk about how we can farm like more like nature so that she pays the tab and you can back off the chemicals and fertilizer. But at the end of the day, it's not about the tools. It's not about tillage, it's not about no-till, it's not about the sprays. How can we reduce those till tools and use them wisely so that we don't go broke? This is what this is about. And I'm telling you, this is growing globally. So here's some of the ground rules for today. Number one, this is your class. And what does that mean? That please ask questions. The only stupid question is a question not asked. We're all thinking about it, but none of us say anything about it. This is about you. This is about our little family today and how we're going to learn and how we're going to bring healing on the planet. Number two rule, I don't have all the answers. All of us here as a collective have better answers. A lot of you here have a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge. This is not about Ray. It's about you. Ask questions. It's about you. Now is the chance. How are we going to be able to bring and help others come down this direction? Number rule three, I'm not here to teach you how to farm. I'm not. I'm here to show a message of hope that I have farmers that no longer buy fertilizer, no longer buy chemicals. I have a message of hope that if we mimic the natural system, I am personally convinced that agriculture by itself can heal the climate issue. Agriculture by itself can heal the climate issue. I have never seen such a great opportunity for agriculture in my whole life. From having no hope to having hope now. Agriculture is phenomenal. We can heal the climate and the carbon and the water vapor and all those things we talk about by itself. Personally convinced of that. So I've never seen such an incredible opportunity and I see large groups of people wanting to go down this path. Interesting thing, and I want to make sure that everybody understands that the millennials, the young generations, 70% of them read labels. The mantra of the future is, let thy food be thy medicine. People are going to want quality. This is where the future is. How many of you knew that about a hundred and some fast food chains are going broke? Anybody know that? Yeah, a lot of these are going broke. It's changing. The younger people care more about the environment and they care about what they put in their body. Agriculture is going to change. Another thing that's going to be a big change for agriculture, I'm just talking to you today. I'm just giving you, before we go out in the field and before we go to the front of the range, I'm giving you a global perspective from my point of view. Like I said, I've been in six continents in the last 18, 16 to 18 months. Been all over the country, every state. 
There's a movement in agriculture that is shifting. And another thing I want you to think about in the future is that the population rate is going down drastically. They predict by 2100, China's gonna be half its size. Young people do not want kids. I have three daughters and only one had kids. Japan is about 50% of their population rate is dropping precipitously all over the planet. So why does that impact agriculture? Because it's going to impact if you, over, you don't have the people, where are, you going to, where are you going to sell your product? The future is about quality. And if we get the microbial community healthy and we bring more nutrient density, that if those microbes can pull the nutrients out of the rock and give it to the plant, you're going to have a better quality corn, and have a healthier cow. It's the microbes that do that. It is not magic like I learned in college. It's not by diffusion, it's the microbes that do that. So how are we gonna get the microbes healthy and happy so that we have better product at the end? I'm just sharing you a little bit of what's happening on a global scale and where agriculture is gonna be. Not, I didn't make this decision. Companies now, like General Mills and companies we've been working, they want product, non-GMO, less chemicals, less everything. And how can we do that and position you guys in a, in a situation where you do regenerative agriculture and soil health? It positions you really well for the future. So I'm just sharing you what I see coming down the pike, okay? Please. When we get ready to go out there, let's, let's not be afraid to ask questions. This is your day, and we're going to start, to me, the best way to always start is with the rain simulator. Why did the soil health movement start? I am personally convinced it's that demonstration and people catching on everywhere. I just got back from Australia, and the producers are becoming more and more well-read about how the microbes work in soil ecology. In fact, I was very impressed with some of the farmers. And Gabe told me when he went in 2012, the knowledge of the producers understanding farmers are excellent engineers, great mechanical engineers, great engineers. You guys are brilliant. But we're horrible ecologists. We're horrible about understanding how our soil works. Very few producers and very few agronomists even understand how the soil works. What we're going to learn about is how to make the microbes happy and understand soil ecology. Ecology is not a hippie word. Eco means study of the house. Economics means money of the house. The way we draw farmers to come and talk, economics. After they start going down this path, they start realizing it was always about the ecology. We get the microbes happy, we take care of them, the economics will work out. Because then you don't have to buy all this product. I do not work for the fertilizer companies, I do not work for the chemical companies, I do not work for the government. I retired from the government. So we can speak freely here. And so, any questions before we go out there? Yeah, uh, do you know how it feels to free speak freely? <laughs> Uh, how many watched, uh, before we go out there, how many watched Kiss the Ground documentary? Raise your hand. You know when that came out? In 2020. I retired in 2017. I'm so glad I retired before that came out because I would have got in trouble over that again. So anybody that has not watched, uh, how many of you get Netflix? Raise your hand. If you get a chance, watch Kiss the Ground documentary. Not because I'm in it. It's not about me. It's about the movement of regenerative agriculture. It's number six. Woody Harrelson is a narrator. Took eight years to do that documentary. That money was volunteer money. They, these movie stars that were in it did not get any money at all. They believe in soil health. So if you get a chance to watch it, it's really a great message. And there's another one coming out called Common Ground. It's gonna be out on Amazon Prime. They just bought Kiss the Ground and the second one's coming up. So as young people see more of this message, you're going to see how agriculture, I think, is going to be raised up to the level of appreciation that you guys deserve.
guys are ready.